Y'all planning for this? Gosh, I cannot even with this resume. I am half tempted to tell my lead to schedule me an appointment so I could eat this kid alive. All right, so I'm looking at a resume for a person that has applied for a job in the operations department within our firm. The operations department is responsible for the movement of money. And here's what he's put down on his resume. Um, he's got a columns, two columns. So one on the left-hand side gives all the skills in my job description. Great, pro move. And on the right-hand side, he also wants me to know that he's a crypto king on entrepreneur, consistent portfolio manager with, get this, 30% gains in the markets, asset allocation diversification specialist. Okay, let me just do a quick broker check. Oh, yep, not licensed. Who is this guy? And the best part of it is his profile picture looks like something out of Rico Suave's tender profile photos. All right. It's so hard finding people. So one of the first things for a lot of our solo advisors that join the Perfect RA is they ask what is the very first step that they should take. And Matthew Jarvis and Micah Shalansky, our co-founders, will tell them, go hire an executive assistant. Like you need somebody to take care of those menial tasks so that you can concentrate on your highest and best use. All right. That sounds good in theory, but how do you take theory and actually apply it to advice that you can use to recruit, to hire, to solicit for people? So today in this episode, I'm going to walk you through just kind of what goes through my head. Uh, I don't actually eat candidates, so that was just a joke, but I will um, take you through how I quickly screen for people. And then also our process of like, where do we post? How do we hire, et cetera? So the very first thing that I want you to remember about is when it comes to online posting for jobs is that it's a bot world, right? So no sooner do you have your advertisement up on a platform that you're paying hundreds of dollars for that the bots start telling all these candidates to apply. So people are auto applying and they're auto responding to advertisements, whether they're qualified or not. So uh, I like to take my job advertisement and make sure that it doesn't look like every other standard job advertisement out there. Um, I like to be a little sassy in it. And I also like to give instructions. I'll ask them a question inside of there. So this could be a, hey, when you reply to this, uh, type the word sassy in your subject line with all capitals, or I'll ask them to Google an answer on something. I need them to take an action because I want them to have read the actual job instead of just a profile bot telling them that they're a perfect candidate and they're hitting the word apply without actually looking at the position itself. So take your job posting, really make it unique, try to not make it look like everyone else's, and then um, ask them to do something inside of the job posting. And this will make the return of applicants so much faster for you to sort through because did they follow the instructions or did they not? And if they did follow the instructions, great. Now you know that they actually know what the job is. All right. The second thing when they apply for is I'm looking for a resume and I want to see their job qualifications and skills. Now, I don't care personally about your pedigree, uh, your university, whatever degree you got. I think that uh, as long as you're hungry, uh, ignorance can be educated. So if you come into financial planning and you're ignorant in that particular area, no problem. I've got all the education you need to get you where you want to be. Um, I love to look at people that are in the healthcare industry. Um, um, and have them convert over to finance. The two reasons why uh, is one, they're used to working with uh, medical providers and professionals, surgeons, et cetera. So they already know that high demanding attitude of the successful financial advisor and how to juggle calendars with clients. Since we practice surge and clients aren't always able to meet with us uh, when they necessarily want to, I need somebody that already has that skill set to, to manipulate calendars. People in the medical field have this all day long, so that doesn't end up being a problem. Uh, second of all, they understand and confidentiality. Um, so they normally have that pretty down. And third, they also kind of get compliance because they have a ton of regulations themselves. So anyone that's a crossover in those industries love to look for. Uh, where do I post job ads? I post it on our website, number one. Uh, careers and opportunities uh, for people to look at. And there's a reason that I do that. And the reason I post it on our website is not because I think that all these job applicants that are out there searching are going to the websites, but two things are going to happen. One, a bot is going to grab that we're hiring and offer that automatically to try to get me to use their platform. So I once posted um, a role that we were hiring for on our website, Indeed grabbed it, and I started getting all these Indeed applicants, but I had never posted on Indeed before. So depending on their algorithms and how things work, they can. Um, 
of course, Indeed is a platform that I use. I also use ZipRecruiter. I kind of really like the resume process of thumbs up, thumbs down to quickly go through things. Um, you know, do I do I think one is a solve all? Nope, sure don't. Um, I think you can also hire recruiters. I don't like paying for recruiters. So uh, recruiters generally want between 10 and 30 percent of your first year annual salary, plus an additional for any sign on bonus. Um, they also charge an hourly fee for the work that they do now. Uh, that's going to range anywhere from $75 to $300 an hour. So if they do their job, you're paying them their hourly rate. And if they're successful at their job, you're giving them what they call a tip uh, for placing somebody. So if I'm placing somebody at $100,000, that position right off the Get go could cost me, you know, uh, thirty grand. So I don't like paying for that. I'd rather spend money elsewhere. But if you have success with a recruiter, I mean, everything works. Use what works best for your practice. So those are my thoughts. The second reason that I also put the job on the website is I am constantly in a state of recruiting. I work with multiple um, business clients, um, and I also have several businesses that I'm an owner of as well, and I'm always looking for talent, sometimes even when I don't have a job opening. I'm great about finding somebody that I just really like how they're treating me from a customer service level, and um, I'll, I'll constantly tell them, hey, if you ever go looking for a job, let me know. This happened with a great employee that I now have. Her name is Hannah. And she worked at my kid's orthodontics office. And I freaking loved her. I mean, she was great. Always a smile, always an attitude, you know, can do. I'm going to take care of you. She was poised. She was professional. Um, I never saw her on a bad day, even if I was having one. And I can be very abrasive to deal with. And she she rolled and navigated with that really well. So um, I would always tell her when I had my appointment, hey, I know, I know you're happy here, but if you're ever looking, let me know. Ran into her and her mom at a Costco once. And I said, don't forget, if you're ever looking, let me know. And uh, seven years went by and during the pandemic, she ended up having a conflict with the orthodontist and she called me and said, listen, I'm in a position after 20 years, I'm actually looking for a job. And I know you always told me, were you just kind of being nice about it? And I was like, absolutely not hired. Let me find a job for you. Quickly found a business client that was looking and uh, put her right in that position. So if you find somebody that you like how they're treating you and the talent, constantly let them know that you're hiring. You will be surprised at the fruit that this bears later on. All right. So you can post on a website. Yes, Facebook works too. Um, if you don't always use your own Facebook business account, this can be kind of lackluster then because they don't really have a lot of information to look at you for. So if you're not actively posting or you're online, uh, maybe don't do Facebook first. Go to LinkedIn, go to ZipRecruiter, uh, et cetera. LinkedIn is great for hiring a professional, uh, less so for hiring rank and uh, staff members, uh, just because LinkedIn is really big on your pedigree. So you have a lot of business professionals putting their professional CV or resume out there, and you're not always going to find your rank and file on those platforms. Uh, you will find them, like I said, on Facebook, on Indeed, on ZipRecruiter, on those type of websites. And of course, make sure you do it so on your own as well. Okay, so now you know that we put the job advertisement out there. We've made it unique. We've made it special. We've given them homework inside of that. That helps me quickly identify uh, what resumes that I want to look at. When I have job posting, I normally get about 160 applicants right off the get-go. Remember, those are bots. So I got to weed through them and I'll probably get maybe around 10% that I actually want to look at. All right. So let's say that somebody uh, meets the criteria on I am ready to move forward. Uh, here's our process that we work through that I'm going to give you in context. If you want uh, more detail, please email us at lifestyle at the perfect and I'll make sure I give you a copy of uh, Jamie's interview guide. So the interview guide is our process and I also give it over to the interviewee because a lot of times the most frustrating part about applying for a job is that you apply for all these jobs online. Maybe somebody reaches out to you. Maybe you don't. It's kind of in the great void. And then you don't know where you're at in the hiring process. You don't know what's going to transpire from one stage to the next stage. And since ours has several phases, I want to make sure that candidate knows what to expect. Now, I'm going to tell you what I do, and it's going to be a little contradictory for us that were raised to be 15 minutes on time to always look professional and to have those sort of life coaching skills already in place. Um, sometimes I get feedback from people saying, listen, I'm not wiping their butts. Like if they don't know how to do this, I don't want to hire them. 
Okay, but a lot of these younger kids don't know how to do this kind of stuff because nobody taught them. And it's not their fault. It's their parents and their teachers and their grandparents. And even us listening to this, if you are looking at a young perf- a young kid that's entering the workforce and they're not acting professional and you don't say something to give them that education, then you're a part of, problem, a part of the problem too. All right, so here we go. So my interview guide, I, saw, or I talk a little bit about our firm, right? Who we are, why are we hiring, what are the different roles, who are the leaders so that they know who that they're going to um, work with when they come here. And then I tell them, hey, this is the things that you should know right from the get-go. And I break it down. One, you got to be on time. Okay. I define that on time for us is 15 minutes early. So you better be there and um, prepared. Uh, Two, you got to do what you say you're going to do. If you tell us that you're going to do something, do those things. Uh, Be respectful to others and be accountable. And then I start breaking it down and I say, okay, you're going to call us. Are we meeting on the phone? Are we meeting on the web? Are we meeting in person? And on all three of those scenarios, I've given them what I expect from them. And then also what we're going to do too during those things. Who's hosting the meeting? Who's initiating the phone call? Break it down so they have absolute clarity. All right. Uh, be prepared. Uh, make sure that they've done the research. Go Google us. Uh, know what kind of company you're working for. Know who I am from the get go um, before you start it. All right. Uh, fake it until you make it won't work here. So I will quickly see through your BS. If you don't know something, just say so. That's okay for me. I, I don't expect you to be omnipotent. I'm certainly not. I'm always in a place of evolving and learning and having more education. But if you try to bluff it with me, oh, Rico Suave. Bad idea. Okay. It takes two joining our firm. That means that we both have to have the right personality to get along. Um, A lot of times, whether or not somebody is a good employee comes down to personality and communication. So it's got to be a good fit for us. Um, I've got to like you, uh, at least on the surface from the get-go, and you got to like me on the surface. Now, I'm talking surface, right? I don't really know somebody's work ethic until they start working with us. And of course, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you can't judge somebody that you just meet after a couple of minutes, especially in an interview. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know, I know if you like somebody. True story. Friend by me over to a party one time, opened the door. The girl said, you B-I-T-C-H-S's, I'm so glad you're here, and grabbed the, the entree that I had brought out of my hands. And I was like, oops, don't like her. Don't like her. This is not going to work. You know, in the first couple of seconds, if you know somebody, if you're going to like them or not. And you'll know in the first couple of seconds if you like the personality of the person interviewing you um, or being interviewed. All right. Uh, family affair. So I talked about uh, faces with names, getting to getting to know our family, our team. Um, please take the time to review the website so that you know who works with us already. Um, typical interview questions. Um, I tell them what to expect on those interview questions. Uh, not so they can rehearse the answer, but because I tell them that I'm probably not going to ask typical interview questions. And instead, I want to have a conversation. Can they carry a dialogue? Can they tell us about about themselves and what they want and their ambitions. You know, can they ask me questions in response to those? Those are really good things. Um, And ask the questions is really, really important. I want them to come prepared to ask me questions as well. Um, Even if I like them and I think that this is a great fit, there's not going to be any instant decisions. They need to sleep on it. I need to sleep on it. And we need to reflect on it and come back together. So I tell them this and I break it down into three phases. So during phase one, you have different stages. You have three stages under phase one. Stage one is going to be the application resume submission. Stage two is the interview with the leads within our company. So you won't interview with me directly. You'll get uh, one of our leads depending on the department that you're um, going to be hired under. And that's relationship management and operations. So we have those broken down into two pods. So if I'm hiring a new relationship manager, they're going to meet with my RM lead. If it's an ops person, they're going to re- meet with my ops lead. Um, stage three, reference an online check. Online check. I do not even allow somebody to go to phase two until I have, depending on your state where you live, looked them up in the court system. I have done uh, Google research on who they are. I want to see their Facebook. I want to see their Instagram. I want to see their TikTok. I want to see all their social media preferences for the last 18 months, not 18 days. I want to know who they are online. Um, 
True story here too. We had a recruiter put a candidate in front of us. Um, and when we did this at this stage of it, she was also an exotic pole dancer. Um, not a great fit for our organization if they're going to be an RM. She taught classes online. She had a YouTube video. She had all those videos out there. Um, not exactly the profile image that we wanted for our company. All right. So phase two, if they graduate all these different stages under phase one, they'll go into phase two. Uh, phase two, I do a DISC assessment, DIS. C. There's also Colby that you can run. Um, I do this quick assessment because I want to make sure that I have square pegs and square holes. And I want to know what personality traits that person has uh, from the get-go. And I, what, what I'm really watching here for is I don't want to hire an ops person um, I don't want to have an ops position filled by an RM because RMs are great with people. And so they're going to be so phenomenal in that interview, but man alive, God bless them. They are not detail oriented and they will make a mistake. And in our company operations is involved in the movement of money. So I can't have them make sloppy mistakes like that. Um, I need them an RM to connect with people and I need ops people to be detailed and to uh, be precise. So I want to make sure here that I just got them in the right role. And that's going to tell me that on that disc pretty quickly. Stage five is a background check. Um, I use Good Hire. There's several different companies that uh, that offer uh, third party background profile checks. They're pretty inexpensive. You can get a basic one for thirty five dollars, and then I think our average is about one hundred and fifty uh, because I do an education, I do a criminal, and then I also do a drug panel test um, because a lot of times I hire people remotely in different locations, and I don't know you, I don't know your reputation, so I throw that on there, and it's one hundred and fifty dollars well spent in my mind. All right, stage six. Stage six, if they graduate all those, um, five and six can happen simultaneously. So I can order the background check and have them do um, the team interview at the same time, just so I can keep that ball moving. And I bring them in for a team interview. And the team interview is really important. I break that down in my guide of what they should expect and what uh, my team members. We have somebody orchestrate it. And whoever that conductor is, is the one that's asking the questions. And then I'll call out on somebody like uh, in my office, Charnel is the lead of our ops. I'll say, Charnel, would you like to ask a question to Bob at this time? And then we'll go around the uh, Zoom room and everyone will be able to ask that person a question. And this is just a great um, experience for the candidate to know that we're really team oriented. Oriented. And so I want to make sure that they uh, that the team doesn't get to make a hire and fire decision, but I want them to know that, that that this is an organization that's going to rely heavily on team. We have about 15 team members, and I really want everyone's buy-in. Not to mention, uh, when I bring on a new candidate, I want everyone's buy-in. I want everyone on that team to be supportive of the decision and to have already put a face with a name uh, in that one. All right, so if they pass the team interview, everyone feels really good about it. Um, nobody's calling out any red flags necessarily. Then they go on to phase three. And at phase three, uh, that's a leadership interview. And so that's when they finally get one-on-one -on -one with me and we hammer out any questions. Uh, we go over income. Um, we go over benefits. Uh, we offer all of those. Then I send them a job offer letter. Um, the job offer letter outlines everything we verbally talked about. It is not uncommon for me to get people to verbally accept the job and then get the offer letter and go, okay, hold on now. I have have questions because they're seeing it in front of them, even if it's exactly what we talked about over the phone. So again, not something that's uncommon. We just go through those. I love to have them written out for that reason. Uh, one thing, uh, legally, I'm not an attorney, but I work a lot with attorneys. And I want you to know that if you have a job offer letter signed, um, it is uh, enforceable. So uh, make sure if you are not wanting that person to move on and get hired by your company, you weaken the language inside of there. Um, I follow that up with an employment agreement, and that employment agreement has NDAs, non-disclosures, and non-competes inside of it. Those are called restrictive covenants. I don't want somebody to work for a year for me, me train them up really well, an RA open up across the street, they walk over and take a new position. Uh, if you offer a restrictive covenant inside of your employee agreement, a legal tip here that I got from an attorney, again, talk to your own attorneys, I am not one, but um, you also have to offer something with it. They call is the booty. So something to um, solidify that restrictive covenant. So maybe a sign-on bonus, $1,000, $500. They have to get something in order to be held bound by something um, to, to really uh, put that agreement together. So again, that was just a pro tip I got for an attorney. Talk to your own about that. 
Um, but when the candidate has this guide, they're going to know exactly what phase, exactly what stage they're at. And so is the rest of our team. So our team can ask like, hey, what phase and stage are they at? And we'll know uh, where they're at in that onboarding process. Um, not everyone makes it. This is pretty rigorous, right? You got nine different stages that somebody has to go through before they get hired. Um, but normally our attrition rate is incredible. I mean, our last hire has been with us for four years and she's the one that's the shortest amount of time. Um, our longest one has been there for 23 years. So like I said, we have a very small attrition rate, but we also take our time hiring in this kind of capacity. Uh, once they onboard, we have an entire learning management software set up. So we put them through that and we have them go through the online uh, courses to learn everything about our business and their role uh, broken down by department. So that is our hiring process. Uh, kind of laborious, I know, but like I said, we have a really low attrition rate and we put, we have the most phenomenal staff. Like we have the most dynamic team in the entire country. I fully believe that. Um, and it's because we took such a rigorous time making sure everyone was in the right role for who they are as a person. All right. This is Jamie Shalansky and Worlds to Conquer. Hold on before we go. Something that you need to know. This isn't tax, legal, or investment advice. That isn't our intent. Information designed to change lives. Financial planning can make you thrive. Start today, don't think twice. Be a better husband, father, mother, and wife. The perfect RIA, the perfect RIA.